For your ears only for the week of January 29th, I'm David Alpern. I'm Catherine Herzog. Governor Romney owns uh, shares of both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Governor Romney made a million dollars off of selling some of that. Governor Romney owns share and has an investment in Goldman Sachs, which is today foreclosing on Floridians. But have you checked your own investments? You also have investments through mutual funds that also invest in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Right. That, that subject really doesn't interest me a whole lot. <laughs> the bigger issue here is these two gentlemen who are out distracting from the most important issues we have by playing petty personal politics. The tables turned in Florida last week as Mitt Romney returned fire from Newt Gingrich more effectively than ever on matters ranging from personal finance to immigration to health care. Both men drew criticism from trailing Republican nomination contenders Ron Paul and Rick Santorum, but a small army of GOP insiders weighed in against Gingrich, and Romney opened a significant lead just days before what could be a defining Sunshine State primary. Nationally, Gingrich still leads among likely GOP voters, but fares worse against Obama than any other White House wannabe. To talk about the most recent debates, the TV ad war, and ground game in Florida, and the shape of the campaign to come, for your ears only, we're joined by Boston Globe presidential political campaign editor Don McGillis. Welcome to our program. Good morning. Gingrich got a second $5 million in Super PAC support from the Adelson Casino family in Las Vegas last week, but many thought he seemed to have lost that in-your-face fire that helped him so much in South Carolina, maybe because he senses that conservatives are more mannerly in Florida. What's your view? I think he was trying to act presidential, God forbid, (laughs) Uh, and uh, that did not stand him in good stead, certainly in the first of the two Florida debates. And then the second one, where he did have an audience that was allowed to be more responsive, he tried his technique of uh, turning a question against the moderator, and Wolf Blitzer wasn't going to have any of it and turned it right back to him. So, And I think that somewhat declawed him in that debate. What impact do you see from those negative notices on Newt from establishment Republicans who actually worked with him in Washington? Uh, do they increase his appeal to Tea Party rebels but turn off at least as many GOP moderates and independents? I'd love to see some good polling on that because there is an anti-establishment, anti-elite feeling among uh, Tea Party sympathizers and others, uh, which was very evident in South Carolina. Maybe it's less important in Florida, but uh, certainly some of that uh, establishment rallying around uh, Newt Gingrich, I, especially when you see you know, Bob Dole and John McCain, who in the, in the minds of uh, some of these uh, Tea Party uh, supporters, these are seen as flawed, moderate Republican presidential candidates of the past and in their minds, uh, nominating uh, Mitt Romney this time could be going down the same path. So to see them rallying around uh, Mitt Romney at this uh, point may not hurt Gingrich all that much among that part of the Republican Party. Well, Mitt Romney's own fortune remains a major theme from the under 15 percent tax rate he's paid to question marks over his bank accounts and tax havens, including Switzerland, uh, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands. Do you see that as a continuing issue? It's an issue, but it's a difficult one, uh, really, for uh, Newt Gingrich to make much of a a fuss about because uh, his tax reform plan would reduce uh, Mitt Romney's total tax obligation virtually to zero because he wants to go to a zero capital gains uh, tax rate. He can, uh, you know, say what he wants about, you know, establishing the Mitt Romney flat tax rate of 15% and all, but under his plan, Mitt Romney would be practically home free. Even more complicated, the Boston Globe did an extensive tax analysis noting the split within Romney's portfolio between uh, arguably job-creating investments and hedge fund plays that are more like gambling. Is that all too complicated to make much a difference? It's going to be difficult in a Republican primary to, for any of the opponents of Mitt Romney, I think, to single out those parts of uh, his fortune that are being Uh, taxed arguably unfairly at such a low rate because, as I said before, basically that much of the Republican Party wants to do away with uh, any kind of tax on investment income. If Mitt Romney becomes the Republican nominee, that will certainly be a lively issue, as we saw uh, Tuesday night when uh, President Obama gave his uh, State of the Union address and started talking about this millionaire's minimum tax 
of 30%, which is roughly double what uh, Mitt Romney has been paying now. And, and of course, Obama tied it to uh, the so-called Buffett rule, Warren Buffett's uh, point that he should, he should certainly be taxed at a higher rate than his secretary, but because his income is predominantly from investment income, uh, he gets taxed at a very advantageous rate. And so I think you're going to see that in the general election. It's going to be a, a much uh, more, if, if Mitt Romney is the nominee, it's going to be a much more important issue then. Rick Santorum has also noted that both Romney and Gingrich have supported elements of President Obama's health care reform, and most notably an individual insurance mandate to more evenly spread the cost. The issue hasn't helped Santorum much, but could it help Obama significantly in the general election? It, it could, uh, especially if Mitt Romney uh, becomes the nominee, because uh, he try as he might to distinguish between uh, Romney care in Massachusetts and the Obamacare health plan for the country as a whole, they really do follow the same model. And it's, gonna, and it's going to make it quite difficult for, I think, for Mitt Romney to be uh, the proponent of repealing uh, Obamacare on the, on the, during the general election campaign if he is the nominee. Romney also has a record of changing his story on himself voting Democratic in the past, notably in a 1992 primary vote for Paul Tsongas. How did that happen, and how important do you think it is now? This is an issue that could resonate in the Republican primary. In 1992, Paul Tsongas, uh, was a former Massachusetts senator, was uh, running for president, and there was a contest also on the Republican side where the sitting uh, president, George Bush, the first George Bush, was being challenged by Pat Buchanan. So Romney had the choice then of voting in that Republican primary in Massachusetts or voting in the Democratic primary. And he, he chose to vote for uh, Paul Tsongas, who was, made a name for himself as a deficit fighter, as a guy who would uh, cross the aisle and work with Republicans to, uh, to reduce the deficit. And that might have appealed to Mitt Romney, who up until that time had not been politically active, really, uh, so he took a Democratic ballot, and that's being held against him. Uh, he said during the debate uh, Thursday night that uh, he had never voted for a Democrat when there was a, an option of voting for a Republican. Well, technically, he, that was wrong. There was an option for him in 1992 to vote either for uh, George Bush Sr. or Pat Buchanan in that Republican primary. Do you see any of the current contenders dropping out after Florida, whatever happens? No, I don't, actually. Uh, as, as you mentioned in the introduction, uh, Newt Gingrich has this uh, flow of money from the Edelson family, and Rick Santorum has positioned himself, I think, to be the final conservative standing outside of Ron Paul. If, in fact, Gingrich's campaign does collapse, I think Rick Santorum still wants to be around uh, to be the final person that that sizable portion of the Republican electorate that has been relatively cool to Mitt Romney. Don McGillis is Boston Globe presidential political campaign editor. Quote from the news, every day I am working hard. I will recover and will return. That was the vow of Democratic Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords of Arizona in a letter of resignation as the House bade a bipartisan farewell to the still recovering victim of last year's assassination attempt. Next, SEALs and the state of Obama for your ears only.